my name's Andrew Stalbo. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Seriously. Uh, I co-founded the company Petri Arvaletto, who runs our Helsinki office. And we have an office here that focuses on product and, on product and content. And we have an office in Venice, California, uh, and where we focus on brand and marketing. Um, I am going to talk today a little bit about uh, building a brand on mobile and share some of the lessons that we've learned and some of the observations we see in the very fast-changing uh, mobile media platform. So we're working hard to build a brand ourselves. And right now, the Best Fiends world has over 50 million downloads and between two and three million people playing and experiencing our intellectual property every day. We treat our apps as a platform for the IP and we're really excited about introducing the world of minutia and the characters that live within it through currently mobile games through the apps. The next generation of entertainment properties get built on sight, sound, and for the first time, touch. The market for mobile content and mobile apps in 2020, according to App Annie, is going to be worth close to $200 billion. And what that means is it's now become the most important platform in the world for media brands. It's interesting, I used to work at Fox, and when I was at Fox, we had a property called Avatar, the biggest movie of all time. But the amazing thing about that is, Fox doesn't actually know who went to see the movie. Unlike today on mobile, where brands that are connected to their audience directly, and that's a huge opportunity uh, for mobile companies to grow and expand. Over the last year or so, we've been focused on YouTube as a big marketing platform for us, and we've been blown away by the YouTube stars who've really learned how to harness the platform. Most of YouTube views are now on mobile devices, and if you ask Variety, uh, they did a big uh, review and they found out that teenagers in America think of YouTube stars as much bigger than Hollywood stars. And there's a reason for this. One, the YouTube stars have a return path and are continually communicating directly with their audience and responding to them. They're authentic and they openly share their lives with their audience. And they have this direct connection to the audience through the most personal media platform we all own. It's the same opportunities for brands as well. Brands today don't think about themselves as products anymore. We're all live services. Dollar Shave Club is a great example that built a creative uh, marketing story on top of a data platform which was recognized by Unilever when they bought them recently. The trick on mobile and brand building today on, uh, and brand building today is to really find a way to be creative like a company like Dollar Shave Club and then to marry that uh, with the data. The same transition of needing to be direct to consumer is something that is happening slowly in Hollywood right now with some of the world's biggest entertainment brands. I remember when I was back at Fox and I was walking around the studio lot and they have 20, 30 of the world's biggest sound stages where they record films and television shows. And I remember a senior executive telling me that Fox could not get disrupted because it was almost impossible to replicate this. Well, welcome to 2016, and YouTube have created YouTube spaces all over the world where talent can go create content for free. It's highly disruptive. So the big challenge that a lot of brands are going to have, a lot of incumbent brands are going to have over the next few years, is to learn how they transition their business from being B2B businesses to going direct to consumer. We see um, a big opportunity for this ourselves at Best Fiends. 
I look at Netflix, and if you think about their business, they started by licensing other people's content, and now they're building their own content experiences and shipping it direct to the consumer. MLB is leading the way for sports rights owners to distribute their content direct to the market. Many of the biggest creative talents in, in the US are very frustrated that they basically create content and then have been distributing it to other people's platforms like televisions or movie theaters. Ultimately, we think there's a huge opportunity for brands to be directly connected to the audience and that's going to be an incredibly powerful thing for them. We saw it ourselves recently when we launched our second game, Best Fiends Forever. We already had an audience uh, inside our first original Best Fiends game, and we had a community of about six and a half million people that we're connected to through Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and uh, newsletters. And we felt like uh, when we launched Best Fiends Forever, we'd really focus on harnessing that community and telling them about the experience that we created with Best Fiends Forever. We were actually, our biggest ever week of downloads before we launched Best Fiends Forever had been one million, one million downloads in a week. So we were trying to think about how many downloads might we do with a new game. And we kind of forecast a million might be the right number, possibly two, but we were blown away when we did over five million downloads in the first week. And I put that down to the fact that we'd created this amazing network effect within the original Best Fiends universe. And I think that that is something that's going to be amazing for brands to be able to harness in the future. When you're building out your audience for your product, I see a lot of technology companies and a lot of startups veer towards performance marketing right at the beginning of their journey. And there's a, there's a fundamental challenge with performance marketing, which is I think it's the only marketing platform in the world where you spend more money, but the per unit economics go up, not down. And so we really thought about how do we introduce our brand and our world in a super creative way and try and marry that with some data analytics to make sure we're doing a good job of it. We were super impressed with what Supercell did. I think they do a really good job of this, marrying the performance with the marketing, with their Super Bowl spot. And we, we really created the first effort of our own, um, which uh, was a video called Don't Download Best Fiends that launched about uh, eight weeks ago. It's a funny story how we created it. So we're connected to quite a lot of people, as, as I mentioned on Facebook and Twitter. And a lot of them would say to us or tell their friends, don't download Best Fiends, it's too addictive. Or they'd go, send me to rehab. It's, I'm just playing this game far too much. So we did, and we created a really, really fun video where, um, uh, where there's some people that, let's say, are suffering from a bit of a kind of addiction problem to Best Fiends in a really fun and uh, sweet way. And we kind of created it as a love letter to our community. It's now had... Uh, 15 million views in six weeks, and it's just uh, up for an award to win YouTube's out of the year. So we're really pleased with the start we've made as we start going up the value chain, creating our own content through our own YouTube platform. When we first started Best Fiends, we uh, asked the CMOs of many other mobile companies which marketing platforms work for them. And the, the feedback was always Facebook and Twitter. And then we asked, which, which platforms aren't working for you for acquisition? And the consensus was always YouTube. YouTube didn't work. So we thought, aha, maybe that's an opportunity for a small startup to find a platform that could work really well for us. So we super focused on it and went deep, given that there's an audience of over a billion people watching YouTube videos every week. Uh, we thought that might be a good place for us to try and build our brand and connect with an audience. I think what's interesting about the platform, and we've done over a quarter of a billion views on marketing on YouTube this year, what's interesting and what we've learned is the talent have a very authentic relationship with their audience. You're one click away from a video to download an app. 
when you market on YouTube, it's not ephemeral. So what that means is if you're spending money on television or Facebook, once you've spent your marketing dollars, tomorrow that's gone away. With YouTube, there's a massive long tail effect of the videos and people really kind of discover content quite a lot longer after the content's originally launched. And then the amazing thing is we created the name Best Fiends because the characters are cute and they kind of have to level up from being cute to more fiendish so they can fight this battle against these kind of evil but hapless slugs that have taken over the world of minutia. Uh, but we created Best Fiends, we own it, we trademarked it, but it's a brand new word. Uh, but it's been incredibly powerful for us seeing some of the world's biggest stars say the name again and again as we introduce that brand into the world. So we think YouTube's been a really, really great marketing platform for us as we try and build a brand out. We've learned a few other lessons uh, along the way. Uh, I'll share, I'll share a, top, a top four or five. The first one is, uh, highlighted by, by Lego, is it's really, really important not to outsource customer service and, and your, social media, uh, your social media managers. That is the front line of your marketing and your connection with the audience. And so that was my number one lesson. Um, your product is not a product anymore. It's a live service. We're, compete we're all competing with companies that are updating their apps and experiences every two weeks. And so from the minute you launch, you really need to be in a mindset which says, I'm updating, I'm learning from the, I'm learning from the data, and I'm, I'm enhancing the experience regularly and often. There's only two metrics that really matter, and that's retention and engagement. Everything else will follow, including the money. But if you can get the retention and engagement right, that's incredibly important. You are competing with Amazon, Netflix, Supercell, Candy Crush, us, everybody. It's a very, very competitive platform. You really need to make sure your retention and engagement metrics are strong. One other thing I see is don't underestimate what you've built. I see this with quite a lot of uh, early stage game companies where they create a game, they get three to five million downloads, and they do a second game set in a totally different world. And I think they're missing an opportunity to see, to really build on the awareness that they've actually created. So that's definitely one. And then lastly, I'd say, when you're building, you need creativity and brand if you've got any chance of cutting through. And when you're designing that at the beginning, trust your instincts and back it up with the data. Don't let the data lead you on that process. So those are my, my five key lessons. So our strategy is to build out a world on your mobile and hopefully in a year Slush will have, have us back and we'll be talking about four games in the Best Fiends network. Uh, a trilogy, we've got a trilogy and a prequel. Um, and our first animated shorts, which we'll be launching too. Uh, and we're excited about the idea of taking people on a digital journey through our world and experiences. As I mentioned to you, the app is a platform where we're looking to show off our IP and communicate to our audience. And we've been really excited that today on World AIDS Day, both of our first two apps, Best Fiends and Best Fiends Forever, are working with Apple and Red to communicate the amazing work that Red do uh, as they work to eradicate AIDS and create an AIDS-free generation by 2020. In both of our games, there's exclusive content uh, that you can buy where all of the money that you spend to buy, for example, one of our new exclusive characters, Bam, who's a caterpillar that grows up to be incredibly fiendish. Um, all the money that is generated through in-app purchases is being directly given 100% to Red. And we're really thrilled to be able to use our platform and all the work we've done to communicate about such an awesome and inspiring project. Uh, so I, I hope that's been interesting. We wanted to share a little bit about our thought process as we go about building a brand ourselves. Um, and just wanted to say thank you so much for making the time to come and see us and encourage you to download the game and contribute to uh, the Red Campaign. Thanks very much.